Hello, this is Mark's Miniature Monday. I'm Dan and this is... Am I Mark? No, you're not, are you? Uh, I'm not, I'm James. This so. is James, Oh, that's yeah. gone horribly wrong already. Well, not quite, because we've hijacked Mark's Miniature Monday. So um, Mark will be back next week with his uh, boyish good looks and... Uh, <laughs> Don't inflate his ego, it's oh, okay, already big no. enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm, D I'm Dan, so I'm the editor of War Games Magazine. And I'm here because we're going to talk a bit about some miniatures uh, that pertain to an article in this issue of War Games Illustrated, this being the October 2021 issue of War Games Illustrated, which has got the theme of Just Add Fantasy. And we're just adding fantasy to one article in the form of these figures here, which are very special they are. because um, they've come into our collection um, bequeathed to us by our good friend Duncan McFarlane, who, uh, when he sadly passed away earlier this year, he left us these figures. And they're very intriguing, aren't they, They James? are extremely intriguing. I'm, I'm fascinated by them, and I can't stop looking at them. Yeah, they're, um, they're something very different. They're something very old as well. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of things in there that, that are, are worth looking at for a number of different reasons. They're painted by John Blanche. Now, you may have heard of John Blanche from such uh, companies as uh, Games Workshop. That's pretty who, much it, right? Yeah, like, I think for so. For about 40 years or yeah, something. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, I've, I've lost track of them, but they're kind of a big deal, I believe, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I remember like the first games day I went to, John Blanche pulled up like a rock star on like a Harley Davidson and crowds gathered around him and stuff. And that's not even an exaggeration. That's actually what happened. Wow. So. John okay. Blanche is quite a big deal, yes. Yeah, he's quite a big deal, and, and, and he spawned the art school uh, of Blanjitsu, um, of which these were kind of like his formative years, really. Yeah. So, so yeah, in, in the magazine itself, we've got a four-page article all about these figures that, that we've uncovered that came to us, as I say, from Duncan's collection. They've not seen the light of day for about 40-odd years, um, they were originally bought by Duncan from John. Uh, he then went on to later commission some work from John himself. But actually what Duncan used to do was go over and see John and say, what you got that's new? And John would show him some of his figures and Duncan would go, oh yeah, I'll have that and I'll have that. Um, the ones over this side of the table that we'll be looking at in more detail uh, in a bit are sort of original, completely original, original bases on them, original uh, John Blanche paint jobs. These on this side, still John Blanche paint jobs, but these have been rebased in the early 2000s by our other good friend, Nick from North Star. It's Nick who's penned the article, actually. He's still in touch with John, and he spoke to John about the figures. So he rebased some of them. Uh, sacrilegiously, oh, yeah. I think yeah. we can all agree now. Sounds like he was a bit nervous about it himself, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all these ones are all fantasy. We've also got some Renaissance figures here as, as well, as well as the figures that Duncan bought from John. He also commissioned some Renaissance figures, um, which are interesting in themselves, but it's the fantasy ones we'll look at in more detail, yeah. because there's a few things, James, that you've picked out, haven't you? Yeah, particularly? I mean, there's... They came, I mean, most of these are probably painted before I was born, which is quite fascinating in itself. Yeah, <laughs> late, late 70s, early 80s, as yeah. early 80s. Yeah, and there's, there's just little details. Like it's, we'll probably get a close-up, but just the sun on the back here is just so iconic of like the Evil Suns kind of logo. And I know there's another figure that is in the magazine that's got the same thing. So this has very much become a symbol of like Games Workshop through the 90s into the 2000s. Mm. Uh, and there it is on the side there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, hopefully the gloss varnish that's on these won't make that a bit difficult to see. Mm. Um, but yeah, incredible detail as well. Yeah. Really small, and I think he uses a technical pen for some of the painting from what I've gathered. Um, the paint itself is, is pre-acrylic, isn't it? Yeah, it's enamels. it's enamels, which again is fascinating to see, and it looks really modern. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because these are the kind of things that more closely resemble modern day competition painting, I think, than figures that you'd expect from the time. I mean, look mm. at that. Yeah. And the shield detail as well. 
Yeah, and all these strange little words as well he's putting yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Well, decipher some of It's just the word carnage written at the top mm. there. That one's pretty uh, yeah. easy to understand. But some, uh, some of them less so. But but yeah, the, the, the figures, a lot of them are Raul Partha. So it's pre Citadel. A lot of them are Raul Partha. A lot of them are Asgard as well. Asgard being a company that Brian Ansell of, of Citadel used to work for before he worked for Citadel. So, so as I say, he's sort of really. Really early fantasy figures, really, as yeah. well. But, but a lot of conversion. Yeah, I was going to say, like, even going back that far, there's already a conversion on this one with a, mm. a grotesque kind of head on the back there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is very cool. Yeah. And then this is the other oldie, which has got another f fantastic shield design on it. Mm. Very glary, though, so hopefully we can get that. Mm. Uh, and I love the basing style as well. Very sort of textured. It looks like kind of the inside of a cave or something like that. Yeah, with these little mushrooms. The little right? mushrooms, yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of the a lot of the iconography which you can now consider to be early workshop Warhammer iconography. John said himself came from a lot of Greeks that he was painted at the time. Yes. So a lot of that sort of checkerboard look and suns and things were the things that he was painting on Athenian shields and things at the time. Yeah, I mean this one's kind of gross as well, but yeah. Very cool, um, and even down to tiny little details. Like I noticed on on the underside of this shoe, you can mm. kind of see he's added like little hobnails into the sole of it, which is just going above and beyond. I mean, you're saying about the shield designs there, you can see. Mm. Yeah, you can definitely see a sort of classic ancient influences in there, can't you? Yeah, and I mean these ones aren't gloss varnish, so you can you can kind of get a better impression of some of the colours going through. Uh, the volumes on 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 the musculature is really really well done, mm. uh, and like I say, it just feels super modern. Because mm. I know John can be quite a divisive kind of artist. Some people aren't so keen on his style, but these seem to be before he really fully went into his kind of saturated palette with a bit of red. There's quite a lot of colour in these, which mm. is unusual for him now. So yeah, that's really cool too. Well, one of the interesting things that John said about his style, which has come to be known as Blanchitsu, is that it wasn't him who decided what that style should be. No. In fact, a lot of the time it, it was people copying his style, wasn't it, who then went yes. on to call it Blanchitsu. Yeah, and that's kind of evolved into the big kit bashing following that's happening now. You've got Inquisitor 28 and Age of Sigma 28 where people, for the most part, are just trying to make it look like Games Workshop Worlds, but I think there's a lot of trying to make it look like John's models mm. and John's artwork in there as well. Yeah. Uh, whereas these, they've got some of the hallmarks of that, but yeah, it's clearly quite early in the development. Again, you, I suspect this is a conversion where he's added maybe a skull to that shield. I might be wrong, but mm. these are before my time in terms of the sculpts themselves. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is a conversion, yeah. So, and just things like this one, I love the colours. Yeah. Like it just really shows a good understanding of what's going to look good on a model. Mm. Mm. The the one, this one there, that one there with the shield, yeah. uh, that's, that's in, I was pointing out that's interesting because it's a bit of Back to the Future going on there. With, oh, yeah. With some of the new releases from Workshop. Yeah, the latest uh, Age of Sigma box set that mm. they brought out. They've really gone back to this kind of style. In fact, they actually, the Orcs themselves look a bit more old school and Ralph Par 3 and kind of yeah. more into the Tolkien sort of look of the the orcs as well yeah but yeah that's definitely got that shield style going on yeah mm. so i wonder if it's has it lost the mushroom from that bit oh, of the base perhaps there? It, yeah perhaps the mushroom's gone a while there it's no mm. longer in mint condition <laughs> no <laughs> yeah which is interesting i mean it, priceless as far as we're concerned yeah. i don't know how, how much they're worth it i know that john blanche's figures have come up for sale in the past on ebay and whatever and some of them haven't actually been Blanche originals at all. Really. Right. They're still sold for quite a lot, but yeah. I mean, how do you put a price on something yeah. like this? It's mm. the detail. Again, there's elements here like all this, like, I don't know if you call it filigree, but it's the kind of effect that's going on. Mm. That kind of reminds me of the paint job that was done on the Green Knight model that one of the Perry sculpted back for the Bretonians. So right. it just seems to travel through all the different Games Workshop periods. Mm. But. I've just watched uh, The Green Knight, the film The Green Knight, and these actually give me that kind of impression as well. There's clearly mm. a lot of historical influence in yeah, these. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these are more historical-based figures, of course. Yeah, yeah, that one is, isn't it, particularly? Are there any others you think? Uh, well, this one is at? crazy. Oh, this, yeah, one's, this, one. this one's amazing, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this one's just 
I don't know what to say about no, this. No, I don't, I don't know what that is. Is it some kind of goblin or? It looks almost human-esque. Um, it, what it reminds me of is some of the early art from, he's got a book called uh, Rat Spike mm. that he did. And some of the artwork in that is very similar to this. It might actually, I'll tr I've got it in my unit somewhere, so I'll try and find it and mm. we can maybe add some pictures. Yeah, it's sort of the, the, the animal, the horse, for want of a better word, it's yeah. got a sort of Dr. Zeus kind of look about yeah. it, hasn't it? It's yeah. a very sort of fairy tale-esque. Yeah, but again, all the colours going through and the tone, the little details and the freehand, the mm. checks down the leg, even the armour looks to have sort of little extra details added onto it. Yeah, yeah. And that face, because it just sits there, different colour palette and cooler than all the rest of the colours, just really pops out. Mm. Mm. Even the shield on the base as well there. Yeah, uh, the shields lend themselves well, don't they, to, to any artist I get yeah. to uh, um, express themselves a bit more on the on the, by the shields and the the banners as well, like with with this one here, which again is is very yeah early citadel stuff, isn't it? I'm, I'm sure there's a white dwarf cover with a, something similar to that. Right, like a picture of that. Lady's face it almost almost looks like something from Sandman, but I think this would be before Sandman. Mm. So, yeah. But again, you've got the sort of stripes on the on the robe again, a bit like that figure we just looked at. Yeah. Bendy banner pole. Yeah, <laughs> I good. can't get that straight. It's yeah, that looks like a, a challenge. Yeah. Mm. And then onto the back. Got the shield again, and I think these are done with uh, like foil, right. which is something that I started to do quite recently and. Mm. Seems like John's been doing it for decades. Yeah. So. Slight battle damage to this one here. Yeah, there is a bit, isn't there? Yeah. That's the thing we just turfed them out of a box, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. This is a uh, an interesting one, isn't it? With almost oh, yeah. sort of plague doctor kind of nose yeah. going on. Yeah. I mean, you can see elements from Mordheim, which is one of the finest games, Games Workshop games, I think. Mm. Um, in that one. Yeah wouldn't be out of place in some of the new Grip and B stuff, except it's actually quite short. I mean, what scale are they? Are they 20 mil? I think 25 would be what they were billed as at the time, but... Maybe over time, miniatures have got, gotten taller. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, fantastic stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a good look at the, uh, at the, at the collection that we've inherited, which is, has been great and, and, you know, Thanks to Duncan for, for yeah. passing it on to us. And, and we wanted to share it with you because that's the best thing about finding it, really, was the, how excited we got about sharing it, both on this video and in the magazine as well. So if you do want to have a, a close look at some of the figures in picture um, at like five times the size, we've blown them up so they're quite big, check out the October issue of War Games Illustrated magazine. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed uh, looking at John Blanche's figures with us. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.